Hey there, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to color correct and color grade log footage without using any LUTs in Final Cut Pro. I have a couple of tools here that are gonna assist me in this process, but before we get into it, a huge disclaimer, there are lots of ways to color grade and color correct footage. I'm just gonna show you some basic stuff to get you started and get you comfortable with the process. I think we should be using log as much as possible when shooting video because it gives you the maximum dynamic range and the best quality image. For all of this today, I'm gonna to be shooting on the Sony FX3 in S-Log3 S Gamut 3 dot Cine, and that's what I shoot everything in. Now, this what's gonna happen in this video, you could use for any log footage on any camera, but that's the example I'm using here. Now, these tools here and how I use them before we get into the computer, this is a great card, and I like to use this to get a custom white balance before I start shooting, and with the Sony cameras, it's really easy. Hold this up, and you can set a custom white balance. I like this style because it's big, it's an easy target to hit with the camera and your subject, or you can hold it up, and it also folds up. <laughs> it's nice and easy to store. This is a color checker. This is a pricey tool, and I did somewhat recently invest in this and I'm absolutely loving it. So I'll leave links down below for these two. Uh, you should definitely check them out. I really highly recommend investing in one of these. It'll last a really long time and it can really help you out with, with color grading and all that stuff, especially in some wonky situations. So the, what you need to do with this is just hold this up in the frame and make sure you get a good look at it with the camera. And you can do this at the beginning of the footage or a separate little clip, but either way, now I have it. Let's bring it into the computer. Now I got the clip in Final Cut Pro and hopefully you're a little bit familiar with Final Cut Pro, but for this, we wanna do a couple of things. And over here on the left-hand side is gonna be our scopes. I mainly use, and you can change that here, I use waveform and vector scope, and I like the RGB parade a lot. This is my main scope that I use, but we're gonna be using the vector scope quite a bit today. Over here, we're gonna be doing all of our adjustments, all of our transforms and masks and um, different layers for our color correction. And one thing I can show you right off the bat first is there is going to be, uh, you can build in, use LUTs that are already in Final Cut. So if you go over to the eye here and you go to camera LUT, you can choose S log three, S gamut three dot cine and it will take that and turn that into a Rec. 709 image. So you can see the exposure is a little bit off and we can make an adjustment there. And to do that, we're gonna to go to this triangle here, the color tab, and we're gonna add here under where it says no corrections, we're gonna add a color wheel. And we're gonna be using this quite a bit. So to talk about the color wheel, um, we're not gonna use this S-Log3 conversion LUT, but <clears throat> I wanna show you first how this stuff works. So this is global, so this adjusts everything. Highlights is the, the bright parts of the image. Shadows is the dark parts of the image and midtones is in the middle. And for each of these controls, you can control the overall exposure, lighter and darker, and you can um, reset it by double clicking. And then this will adjust the saturation. And you can adjust that by uh, reset it by double clicking. And in the middle, we can change the colors. You can push it towards green, towards magenta, towards blue, etc. <clears throat> so we're gonna be using these quite a bit. Now in this here, if you wanted to use the conversion LUT, and then you can look over here at the RGB parade. 100 is pure white, zero is black. So you can see that some of the highlights are above 100. So we can take the overall exposure, adjust it down, and we have a decent image. It's not my favorite, but it, it does work. So I can show you that. So we're not gonna be using that though, because I don't think it gives you the best image. And anyways, we're gonna, we're gonna build it by scratch. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna reset this. So if you click on the little button here on the right, you can reset the parameter. And I'm gonna go back to the eye and turn that LUT off. So there's a couple of corrections that we wanna do. And the first of which is we can check the white balance. So let me show you how to do that. And you probably got it pretty close by using the, um, the custom white balance in the camera. And you can see this on the RGB parade. The brightest part is this white part here. And you can see that's pretty even, the red, green, and blue. In that case, they are pretty even and the black should line up as well. But let me show you how to do this. Now, before we get into that, we need to do a basic um, exposure correction. And so I wanna do that first. So what we're gonna do is go into the color tab. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna raise up the highlights and you can see in the RGB parade, we're gonna push this up towards 100, but not over. And then the shadows, we're gonna lower that down to just above zero. So if you go below zero, you'll crush the shadows, they'll turn completely black. If you go 
too far above 100, you'll blow out the highlights and they'll turn completely white. I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast here. You can use S curves. I generally just use the wheels and I'm gonna pull down the midtones a little bit to sort of richen up the image. And I'll just add a little bit of sharp uh, saturation here to the whole image. Maybe add a little bit more down the midtones, a little more saturation. And that is passable for an image. And you could see basically a little bit more in the midtones, depending on liking. You know, that's passable. So this is what comes out of the camera. This is after a very basic uh, color correction uh, or color grade there. So I, you can see that you don't really need a lot to do this. Uh, and now we're gonna show you, this is a basic way to convert it so it looks pretty decent. But we're gonna go through and really dial in some of the stuff. And so I mentioned we're gonna start with white balance. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna leave this color correction here and we go under here where we can do all of our layers and stuff. And the order that they show up here is the order that they appear or they get applied to the image. So as I said, let's start by doing the white balance. So to do that, um, if you go under the effects, which is over here, and you can type in a search, I type to search for mask, and you can draw this, take this and drop it on your clip. And now we have a mask tool. So I need to turn off the transform tool. So now we have the masking tool selected here, and we're gonna select just this left part of the image, or sorry, of the color checker. All right, now we have that selected. I'm gonna unselect the mask tool, and I'm gonna zoom in, and so to do that, you go under the transform over here, and we are going to scale this up. And to move the image, you can either drag X and Y, or you can click this right here, this transform, and then just drag it over and we can scale it up a little bit more and move it over. All right, so this is black, white, and gray. So what we need to do is we're gonna change this to the RGB overlay. And what you can see is that <clears throat> the white balance isn't perfect. So this is the white up here. And if this was completely white balance accurate. You can see the red, green, and blue here. We want that to overlay so it just looks like white. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my colors and I'm gonna adjust this. I'm gonna take the highlights. So I'm gonna adjust this, this top layer. And when you adjust one thing, it adjusts everything. So you have to sometimes go back and forth a bit. And we're gonna move this around until we get basically white so we don't see any of the colors. And it looks like the blacks are good, the mid-tones. There we go. And I have to clean up the highlights just a little bit more. There is some back and forth here till you get everything good. All right, that looks pretty good. And looks like the shadows need a little bit of cleaning up. There you go. So you can see that it's just white at each level. That's kind of what we're looking for here. And again, sometimes when you make one adjustment, it changes all the other ones. So just playing with this, the shadows here. Cool, okay, we'll roll with that. So now we have this done. Let's move this, make this bigger. We're gonna go back to our layers here and I'm going to reset the transform. So again, over here on the right, we're gonna zoom out and then I'm gonna take off this mask and I'll hide that. Okay, so now we're back to the main image. We have our white balance done. So now what I wanna do here is um, go in, turn off the transform no, we don't want that mask. <laughs> we reset the mask, and then we're gonna go and make a new mask by resetting it, turning it on, and then hitting the, the mask select tool. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the, the right part of the color checker. This is where all the colors are. All right, and we can adjust it just a little bit. Cool, and again, we're gonna zoom in. So we go to the transform. And we're gonna scale up all the way, turn off the mask tool, turn on the transform tool, move it over, make it a little bit bigger maybe. All right, so what we have here is, these are all the colors, the standard colors in the first column. Second column is skin tones, So, uh, but we're gonna be focusing on the first column here. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna start correcting the colors and making them really accurate. So on the left-hand side, we're gonna go to our scopes and change this to vector scope. And so what you see in this vector scope is 
all of the colors. So this is the red, the yellow, the green, and so on. And these are represented by these colors. And this is why having that color chart is so important because it has very accurate colors. So what I'm gonna do here is make sure that the scale is at 133, which helps make it so you can see it a little bit better. And what we're gonna do here is we are gonna to go to the color tab and I'm gonna turn up the saturation. So we're gonna to go to the global saturation here and I'm gonna turn up the saturation pretty strong so that they start to line up with, but not go past those boxes. All right. So now we're gonna do is we're gonna start correcting the colors. So to do that, we go under here where it says color wheels. We're gonna add a hue saturation curve. And if you go back to the main one here, you can see all the stuff in order here. We have the color wheels before the hue saturation curves. And that's important because we wanna make those initial exposure adjustments before correcting the color. So anyways, let's go on to changing that up. So over here, if we go back to the color tab, you can switch between the color wheels and the hue saturation curve. So this is really cool. So the first one here is hue versus hue. So you're gonna select colors and you can change the color of the colors. And then hue versus saturation, you can change how saturated each color is. So we're gonna go through here and let me make sure this is turned off. Transform is turned off, okay. We're gonna go here and click the eyedropper and I'm gonna select all the colors. So go through and select all the colors in that left column and these will be showing up on the hue versus hue curve here. And I'm also gonna do this for the hue versus saturation. Okay. Now what we need to do is correct the colors. So you can see over here on the vector scope, the red isn't quite at red. The purple's aiming, the magenta's aiming at the magenta, the blue's a little off. You can see the colors are fairly accurate, so it's not gonna need a very big adjustment here. So we're gonna go over to the hue versus hue and we're gonna change the color of the red. So to do that, we hover the mouse over the red. I'm gonna hold down the shift button and what that does is it keeps it from moving left and right. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna line up the red with the red. We'll go through and I'll work on the yellow. If you make a mistake, you can just hit let go and hit control, um, control Z to undo. Uh, the magenta, we're gonna aim the magenta at the box, the blue, I'm just gonna go through and Adjust all these colors. Whoops, wrong one. Sometimes I grab the wrong, wrong one by accident. There's the cyan. Oops, and then the green. All right, so now the colors are accurate, but the saturation is a little bit off. So to adjust that, we're gonna use the hue versus saturation. And you can see I can make the magenta more saturated by grabbing the magenta, pushing that out towards magenta pushing the blue out a little bit. Um, the cyan, green, whoops, wrong one. All right, there you go. And then what I like to do is just kind of smooth out the curve a little bit. All right, there you go. That looks great to me. So you can see that the colors are accurate and the saturation is all even. And the important part is that we masked out so we're not getting the background or anything else. Um, and then the other line on here, if you are curious, this line here is the skin, uh, the skin tones. And you can see that the skin tones are the ones from that second column, they're all showing up here. But we'll make a last minute adjustment based on the skin tone of the subject and I'll show you that at the end. So now we have the colors all accurate. We're gonna go back to our color wheels and take out the saturation because it's gonna look ridiculous. So I'm gonna double click that and that gets rid of all the saturation. Now let's go back to the regular image. Let me make this a little bit better. Uh, we're gonna go over to the main area here and um, we're gonna get rid of two things. One is the mask <clears throat> and then we're gonna get, reset the transform. So go to transform and reset that. And we have our image now. So this is color corrected. Um, now we have to go through and just grade it slightly. So what you can see here is this is uh, right out of the camera. This is a quick exposure change. And, and um, then we added our little bit of color correction right there. So let's go, let's go ahead and make our final changes here. So we're gonna go back to the color wheels and then I'm gonna ch change this over to waveform and I personally like RGB Parade. So that's what I, what I have here. So I can see that um, 
I'm looking at the blacks. They're just over zero, so that's fine. The highlights, I think, are... I don't have anything that's in this image besides the color checker that's really white, maybe the strings on my, my sweatshirt, but this is the part where you're gonna kinda grade to taste. So as I adjust the highlights, I wanna add a little bit more punchiness and a little bit more contrast, so I'm gonna bring down the mid-tones a little bit, and I'm just playing with the image here, making it look how I want, and then I add a little bit of saturation. Again, don't go crazy with the saturation. And now that I have the image looking good, it's white balance, color corrected, this is where you kind of make it how you want to make it. So I like it a little bit punchier, <laughs> a little more saturated. And the last thing that I am going to uh, check here is the skin tones. So to do that, I'm going to change this back to vector scope. And I'm going to go, I'm not going to do a full mask, but sometimes when I check skin tones is what I do. I go through and I just zoom in. And then go to the transform and put over my face. And you can see this, here's my, my skin tone here and how it's next to the, um, the skin tone line. Uh, this is pretty close. What I can do is I can go through and adjust it a little bit and I can do that in a couple of different ways. If I go to the color wheel, uh, the, sorry, the hue saturation curves and it's looking like the red is too close to red, I could just grab the red and pull that down a little bit and get it more in line. But if I pull it, you'll see I start to get green so I think kind of where it was was actually good. I think that looks pretty good. It's very close to the skin tone line. And you can tweak this depending on the subject and also like the look that you're going for. So I think that looks pretty accurate and the skin tones look pretty good there. So I'm gonna go back and reset that transform. And there you go. There is our color correction and slight color grade there. And you can do creative grades too by pushing colors around and stuff like that. I'm having a hard time. I usually do this on my big monitor. So I'm using my laptop here. So it may not be perfect, but um, that's just a general way of getting started with this. It's color accurate now. And um, we put a light grade on it. I could also just see that maybe the blue is a little too saturated here. Um, so we could, turn, we could tune that down a little bit if we wanted to. Also, you can see the background is pretty saturated. So we can pull that back just a little bit maybe. Anyways, you can see how you can get crazy with the tweaking, but again, this is no correction whatsoever. This was the sort of exposure grading part of it and correcting, and this was the color correction there. So there you go. Now, if you are doing this in your studio like I am here and you wanna save this, you can um, save it as a preset and you can go over here and click Save Preset and you can name this whatever you want. And I find this really helpful. If you're always shooting on the same camera with the same lights in the same environment, save your preset and then you can apply it later on. And that'll give you uh, a really nice image. And hopefully you can see that this is a great way to approach this. It really doesn't take that long. And again, if you're doing the shot over and over again, you can save that preset and use it. But if you're doing one video, you know, I can do this color correction in five or 10 minutes and then apply it to all the clips and I have a really nice image. It takes practice. There is some creativity with it. There is no right way to do this. Of course, you wanna make sure the um, the chart is looking good, the vector scope, and making sure you're not blowing out highlights and crushing shadows. But a lot of that stuff in the middle is kind of by taste and the feel that you wanna go for. So as I said before, I highly recommend picking up a color checker. I'll leave links down below for this if you wanna check it out. Hopefully you're not gonna be scared of using um, log in the future and you can get a nice looking image with some basic color corrections in Final Cut Pro. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting subscribe down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.